is where Jesus reigns. Amen. And we just welcome everybody from Banbury, from FTCC, and even those who are actually tuning in with us from outside Banbury. The Lord bless you. And um, I welcome you on behalf of our Bishop, Bishop Sam Fredericks, to our Bible studies this evening. And Mama Desri, hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, We've been looking at, um, we've been speaking for some few weeks now. I think this is the third week we've been looking at principles of walking in the power of God. Hallelujah. And um, we began to speak about um, who the Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. We spoke about the Holy Spirit last week. I don't know if anyone can remember where we were last week and um, can just give us a recap on what we did so far on the Holy Spirit. I'm pretty sure we have people with their notes, reaching lots of notes down. Hallelujah. Anybody? Before I call somebody. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I think we finish on reading um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm just trying to get to where, where I was last week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other thing? Can anybody remember what we spoke about? We spoke about who is last week. We, uh, we said we were talking about who the Holy Spirit is. Can somebody just give us maybe one or two points from what we did last week about who the Holy Spirit is? Amen. The first point we mentioned, we said the Holy Spirit was. It's a okay. counselor. It's a standby. Amen. Advocate. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Counselor. But I'm pretty sure that was not what the first thing we talked about yet last week about who the Holy Spirit is. Yeah, we got Acts 73. And then from that, we can remember what it stands for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Holy Spirit is a light. God's self, the Trinity. Okay. Let me just, let me just run through it again. Last week we looked at them. Um, sorry, somebody wants to say something? He brings the presence of God. He brings the presence of God. Amen. Yeah, that's one of the points we mentioned last week that he is the one that brings the presence of God to us. We when 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 we say we can feel the presence of God around us or we 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 sense the presence of God, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. He does bring the presence of God. And we looked at a scripture. Um, from Isaiah chapter 63 and verses 9. I don't know if we can open quickly. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 9. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 9. And he reads, he says, in all our all the afflictions, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Amen. Then he says, But they rebelled and vexed his you see now he's talking about the angel of his presence that's the, the angel of his presence is the one that brings the presence of god and is the holy spirit he talks about how the children of israel they vexed the holy spirit by disobeying god amen so from this scripture we know that the holy spirit is the one that brings god's presence into our life that's why he, he, and, and the reason for that is because and which was one of the first points we mentioned is that the Holy Spirit himself is God. Amen. We know that um, right now we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit at this time, because we had a dispensation when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came on earth and he died on the cross and he rose again. And now Jesus Christ, before he left, 
He says, I will send you another comforter, which is just like him, that he will guide us into all truth. So now we're in that dispensation where the Holy Spirit is the one that is at work in the church today. Hallelujah. He is just like Jesus Christ. So just like how Jesus Christ was with the disciples where, you know, he was able to help them. He was able to, they were able to um, enjoy the presence of, of the father because he says, he, he says to them, he says, if you have seen me, you've seen the father, the same way the Holy Spirit is now he is here so that we can enjoy the presence of the father. Amen. And he is also the spirit of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the first points we mentioned last week was that the Holy Spirit himself, the first one, is co-equal with God. He is the one who proceeds from the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the best description and character of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 15, 26. We, last week, we looked at that. Amen. He says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second point we, we looked at yesterday was that we said, we see the first reference of the Holy Spirit in Genesis chapter 1 and verses 2. Hallelujah. Where the Bible says, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He is the doer of the Father's intentions. So every intention of God, the Holy Spirit is the one who does the intention of the Father. Amen. That's why we constantly need the Holy Spirit in our lives in order to walk in the power, uh, in order to walk in the power of God and also walking in the plan and the perfect purpose of God for our lives. Amen. Because he's the one that can lead us into it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you see as a believer, you can never do anything. You can never please God without the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We, we definitely, we constantly, it is something that is vital to our Christian walk with God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk in God's perfect plan for your life. Because he's the one that executes God's plan for our lives. Amen. So, therefore, you know, um, what do you call him? Young Gicho says that the Holy Spirit is his senior partner. Amen. Therefore, the Holy Spirit should be our senior partner in doing the things of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Then the next one we looked at is that um, we said, he is the one who communicates the presence of God. Hallelujah. He is the one who brings us the presence of God and makes it real to us. Hallelujah. We looked at that earlier on. That was the third one. I think the best, um, pastor, it, must be, it was the pastor that mentioned that just now. Amen. Yes. Yes. So pastor mentioned point number three that we talked about. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to look at the fourth, fourth point we're talking about. Now, the fourth point is that the Father, the Father dwells in every believer. Amen. The Father dwells in every believer or dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. He lives in us through the Holy Spirit. So if we want to say God lives in me, God lives in me through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So therefore, well, you know, um, Smith Wigglesworth said something. He says, I am a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Amen. And that is, that is just a limited description just for us to be able to understand. Amen. But God is more than that. We are bigger on the inside than we are on the outside because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit takes a board in us. You know, there was a time in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit lived in, in a tabernacle, in temple that was made with hands. But in this time, the Holy Spirit has found a place in the believer. You know, when you know that the Holy Spirit lives in you and you're conscious of that truth, amen, you will walk in the power of God. You know, I talked about on, on Sunday about acknowledging, 
amen, and acting on the truth that you know, amen? So when you believe something, you acknowledge it, you act on it. That's why we can lay hands on the sick and they should they recover because we have the powerhouse inside of us, amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 22, let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 22. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 20, 22. If you're there, can you read, please? Anybody? In who? Uh, let me read. Okay, sir. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 22. I'm reading from the KJV. Yeah. In whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. Exactly. You see that it says, in whom ye also are being built together for a dwelling place. I'm reading from the New King James, but King James obviously say, Hi, um, um, he says something different, but it still it means the same thing. For a dwelling place of God, amen? For a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So we see here that the father has his abode in us through his spirit. So in whom ye also are being built together for a habitation of God through the spirit. Hallelujah. So here, Paul is actually talking about here, um, he's talking about a corporate, a corporate, um, we as a believer, as, as a corporate building of God. Amen. That in that just like every one of us, we're like a piece of stone of a building. And when you now put all those pieces together, you form a whole building. And in that whole building, God dwells in that whole building. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, that's why we're so powerful when we're together. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in their midst. Amen. So we know that when we are gathered together, not just when we are only gathered, even when we are on our own, we have the Holy Spirit in us. But here, Paul is actually emphasizing here about um, how we are corporately the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother Kelly puts it in the comment there. He says, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we operate in boldness. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Once upon a time, I was so timid, you know, standing in front of a crowd. In fact, when I was in the primary school, right, I never liked standing in front of people to actually do any talking. They, my teacher knows me for that. So sometimes they, they have to literally get me to do a quiz or, or just something so I can get away from that. But I just don't feel, I don't still feel comfortable standing in front of people. But you know, when you receive the Holy Spirit, all those things goes away. Amen. Especially when God calls you and he wants to use you for a purpose. Amen. For example, if you look at Peter, when, when Jesus Christ was almost was going to be crucified, Jesus Christ said to him, he says he was going to deny him three times before the cock crows. Peter did. In fact, he says he didn't even know who Jesus was. But when we look at the book of Acts chapter 2, where when they, they received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Amen. And verses 8. Acts chapter 2, sorry, not verses 8. I'm going to start from the beginning. And um, verses 1. And Sister Helen, can you please read from 1 to 1 to and um, can you read from 1 to 4? Then you go, you skip from 4 to 14. Amen. Okay, amen. <clears throat> So reading from the Amplified, 
Acts chapter 2, chapter, uh, verse 1. What? When the day of Pentecost when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And four. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. And they were all filled, that is, diffused throughout their being, and with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Okay. Do you want to go to 14? 14, yes, please. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be explained to you. Listen closely and pay attention to what I have to say to you. Amen. So we see Peter that denied Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost when he received the Holy Spirit, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Guess what? He just got up with, with, and raised his voice, standing there, and began to tell these people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And explaining to them what was really happening, why they were, why they, the people were praying in tongues, because the people listening to them thought they were drunk with wine. So he had to explain to them, and he was able to preach the gospel in boldness. And the Bible said, many came to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you will see that you are not ashamed of the gospel anymore. You stand for the gospel. You, you're able to talk about the gospel, tell people about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you receive boldness, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you utterance and it gives you boldness to be able to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not, you're not, you're no more ashamed of saying to people, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God. You're no more, no more ashamed to tell people that, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ because you have been filled with the Holy Spirit and you're no more ashamed of who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, just give me a second. So we see Paul now discusses the function of the temple. Um, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 22, where Paul begins to, to say that we are an habitation of God. Now he's explaining the function of the temple. He says, God places individual believers into the structure. Thus, it is being built together. The goal of this temple is to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing that God lives? You know, you can just, God lives in me. So it means that I'm good enough for God to live in me. Amen. Can you, you know, you look at yourself. People might look down at you. People might say, oh, look at him. He's this, he's that. But you know what? God so loves me that much to be able to live in me. That's amazing. That means the creator of the whole earth, the creator of heaven and earth, he sees value in me to live in me. This is why you cannot allow negative word to, to bring you down. This is why you cannot allow anyone to bring you down because God has chosen you. God has chosen to live in you, to look through your eyes, to move through your arms. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, to speak through your mouth. Like I have no doubt right now that God has chosen me, has he's, 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 he's chosen me, he's chosen to speak through me, to see through my eyes and to, to touch other people through my hands. He used me as a vessel. And so, so, he, so it's the same thing with you. God has chose to use you. God has chose to dwell in you. In fact, God, if God needs to touch somebody here on earth, he's going to do it through you and me. That's why he's doing it through the body of Christ today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't, let's not take that statement for granted. Let's not, let not look at ourselves based on the value the world places on us. We have to play, look at ourselves on what God says we are. Hallelujah. He chooses to become and um, to make us his habitation. Amen. I want you to say after me, I am God's habitation. Amen. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks through me. The Holy Spirit uses my hands. The Holy Spirit sees through my eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the Old Testament, God's glory was in the temple. We, 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 we see this in, um, for example, we see God's glory in, um, let's open our Bibles quickly. I want to show something. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 5, I think it's Second Chronicles, if I'm correct. Uh, we're going to look at the last two verses of that chapter. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 5. Um, no, it's First Chronicles, I think. Yes. Uh, Am I correct? What is that? Hmm. Trying to think now. Yes, Second Chronicles chapter, chapter, chapter five. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This was in the Old Testament. Amen. Where, but in the Old Testament, we knew that um, there were certain people that. Um, were allowed to work in the temple of God. They were from a particular family that is from um, from from the Levites. You know, they 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 were the ones that were appointed to actually become priests in the temple. Amen. And if we look at verses twelve, Amen. Hallelujah. And verses chapter five and verses twelve. Is Dickness Max in there, please? Can she read from um can she read from verses 11, I think? Yes. I thought as much. Second Chronicles chapter 5 and 11. 11 through to the last verse. Okay. It reads, and it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Judathan, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets, 13. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud. 14. So that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says even the priests could not even minister because of the glory. Because, of, because the glory of God filled the house. Amen. So that's how powerful God's presence was. They could not even minister. God had to just, just keep, you know, they had to just allow God to move in that place. Amen. Imagine you being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Imagine the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You see, this is why when the Bible says Paul, when he was, when his shadow was able to heal people from sickness and diseases, because he was that full of God's presence. Amen. Now, the, you know, now God does not want to dwell in a building made with hands. He wants to dwell in the believer. 
He wants to live in the believer. That's where he wants to. He's, he's found. Don't let me say he wants it. He's found a dwelling place in the believer. Hallelujah. Don't wonder, Paul says, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. So in the Old Testament, God's glory was in the temple, which represented his presence with the people. In this age, God dwells in his new temple, which is constructed not from inanimate materials, but of living believers. Hallelujah. Living believers. That's why it's important that we know who we are in Christ Jesus. You're not an ordinary person. You're not like a man. You're, you're a different person from an unbeliever outside the world. An unbeliever outside the world is to, is, his, his origin is too linked to the old Adam. But you as a believer, you are a new creation. And in this new creation, God has chosen to dwell in the new creation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in this age, God dwells in his new temple, which is constructed not from inanimate materials, but of living believers. So, the Holy Spirit dwells each individual believer. Amen. And um, we can see some scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 5. No, John chapter 14. This is Jesus speaking. John chapter 14 and verse 17. We read this last week when Sister Ludi asked them um, if the Holy Spirit can live in somebody that is not a believer. And then we actually read this. Actually, he says, the spirit of truth whom the whole world cannot receive. You see, the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because they're still in the world. They're not in Christ Jesus. They don't have the capacity to have the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Um, John chapter 14 and verses 17. Amen. John 7, 14 verses 17. He says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him because you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So Jesus Christ promised this that the Holy Spirit will be in us. Hallelujah. And another scripture, I'm going to ask um, Brother Ian Bateman to please read from Romans chapter 5 and verses 5. Amen. Amen. Reading from Romans 5, 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us. Amen. Because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. This now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is a power there. There's a way God, God walks in us. Even the Bible tells us that he, God walks, that, that the way God walks, the, the, the power of God walks in us. If we look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, we look at that scripture. It's actually a powerful scripture. Um, for us to actually know that, you know, that there's an excellence of power that is at work in us. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, last week I said, if you don't know it, 
you cannot acknowledge it and you cannot act on it. But when we know it, we're able to acknowledge it. And we don't when we, we, we have to constantly, constantly, constantly look at it, read it, meditate on that truth. Amen. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All of a sudden, you start like when the Holy Spirit begins to unwrap that scripture to you, then you be bold, you be confident of what you do in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And we constantly need the word of God. We constantly need the word of God. We need the watering of the word of God in our hearts. Amen. To take us from one glory to another every time. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We know that our bodies is made from the ground, from the soil. Sorry. This is, this is like earthen vessels. He says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So we know that God is at work in us. Praise the Lord. And how is God at work in us? God is at work in us through the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God is at work in us through the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to share two more scriptures. Um, there's another one in Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verses 13. I can read. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the New International Version. Okay. Uh, Philippians 2, uh, 13. Yes, sir. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Amen. I like that translation. Can you read it again, please? Uh for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Exactly. It says it is God who works in you, both to will and to fulfill his perfect plan. Amen. <laughs> so if you want to work in God's perfect plan for your life, it says it is the Holy Spirit that works in you. It, that means it says for it is God. It, actually, the Bible says it is God who works in you. So God works in us through the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He works in us through the Holy Spirit, both to will, like I am willing to go all the way for the Lord. The Bible says it's the Holy Spirit that works in us to be able to, both to will, you see, this is why every single day we have to rededicate our will to the Lord. Look, it's, 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 it's important. We have to say, Lord, I rededicate my will to you, Lord. Have it. It belongs to you. I've been bought with a price. This is an act of worship. An act of worship is not just singing. An act of worship is not just singing songs. An act of worship is actually laying down your life to the Lord and say, Lord, it belongs to you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, pleasure. So, for example, if I, if God is working in me, the reason why you're so, your heart is so full of like, I really need to will some souls for the Lord. I really need to do evangelism. The Bible says God is working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Or the reason why you wake up sometimes, you just want to pray. The Bible says God is working in you, both to will 
will and to do of his good pleasure. The reason why you just want to walk in love all the time. You just want to pray for people. You just want to serve. The Bible says God is walking in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You know, we quote that scripture so much time, like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Guess how, how, how we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us? By the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last scripture is let's open our Bibles to actually one more scripture after this. Romans chapter 8. I'm just going to flow with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verses 11. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8 verses 11. Are we there? Um, I'm going to ask Brother, Brother Thomas say, to please, if you can, can you read Romans chapter 8 and verses 11, please? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, praise the Lord. One, one minute, please. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Yes, sir. I'm just opening to that scripture, Romans chapter 8, verses 11. I'm reading from the NIV. Uh, the Bible says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, mm. he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. What a powerful scripture. Amen. Look at that. It says, If... But if, 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 this is not, it's just basically, Paul was just trying to emphasize the spirit that lives in us, what he does in us, amen? He says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Hey, look at you. There was some, there was a time in the Bible that the, it says in the Old Testament that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. The life of the flesh is in blood. But hey, the Bible is saying now for a new believer, a new creation in Christ Jesus, it says that it is the spirit that gives life to your mortal bodies. Hallelujah. It means that, you know, when, when you have, um, um, I'm trying to um, use, you see, I say we are a spirit being that has a soul and that lives in the body, amen? We have the power of God transmitting life from our spirit to our soul and to our bodies, amen? That's why you can say, I cannot be sick. You know, many of us, we always look at, um, we always, uh, we always, um, we, 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 we always look at our five senses because of the way we feel and all sorts. And we take that as the gospel truth of that is all we can do. And the only way we can get um, we can um, we can get life into this mortal body is by um, going to see the doctor. I'm not saying there's nothing. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with you going to see the doctor. But hey, we have to still acknowledge where life is coming from. Hallelujah. We can't forget that. We can't forget what the Bible says about where life is coming from. In fact, if you look at that word, it says it shall give life. It means it shall vitalize your mortal bodies. That's what it says. It vitalizes your mortal bodies. He says, if the same spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead all will also give life to your mortal bodies through who? The Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's amazing that we're not conscious of the life that flows from the Holy Spirit to our mortal bodies. 
And we wonder why we're not seeing the power because we've not acknowledged this truth. We've not, um, we're basically, um, we, we, we know it, but we're passive about this truth. And this is not the time for us believers to be passive about certain truth of God's word because we have to begin to see with the eyes of God. When God says that this is what is happening within us, we have to just believe God and say, yes, sir. I believe it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In fact, you know, people are even scared to trust God in his word. They're scared of trusting God, but they will prefer to trust more of what the doctor says. Amen. I've been there too. But the more you look into the perfect law of liberty, the more faith is stirred up in your spirit, then the more you want to act on what the word of God says. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the last one is Ephesians chapter 3. And verses 21. No, yeah, yeah, no, verses 20. Brother Kelly Matthew, please, can you read for us, sir? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, you know, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in that work it in us. Amen. You see that? It says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. In fact, let me, let me give us, let me, let me just put it this way. There is nothing you can think on this earth that there is nothing you can think as a human being that will be impossible for God to fulfill. Let's put it again. There is nothing you can think if you can think of it, there is nothing you can think of that will be impossible for God to meet it because your mind cannot, can, doesn't have that capacity. Amen. So in fact, so why I'm saying this is when we pray concerning something, for example, when we're asking God, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying here in Ephesians 3.20, it says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask him or think and according to the power that works in us. So God, when God answers our prayers, he works exceedingly abundantly above. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. It says exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. So when, when you're asking, Lord, Lord, uh, I ask in the name of Jesus that some people, some of us will say, Lord, heal my child, heal my brother. And God is saying, yes, I will heal him, but I will also make him whole. <laughs> Amen. I will also make him whole. So God goes beyond where you think is a limit for God. He goes beyond that. So for those of us that are trusting our friends, trusting God for our friends, our families, or our children, God is saying that he's going to go exceedingly above and beyond that. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So our God is a God of exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Then, you know, you know he didn't stop there. He says, according to the power that works in us. So there is a power that works in a believer. Amen. There is a power that is at work in you and I, in me and you. Don't let us not handle the things of God or the, um, the work of God just haphazardly because there is a power that is at work in us. 
Amen. Just standing, being an usher alone, ushering people into the church, God is saying that there is a power that is at work in you, the power of the Holy Spirit, in order for you to do that work. Amen. And you find out that you are a witness to somebody. And all of a sudden, that person comes to Christ. You know what happened in the realm of the Spirit? You literally just snatched that person out of the domain of darkness, out of the domain of Satan. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. So there is a power that is at work in us, and that power is the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. The principles of working in the power of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So in conclusion in that verse, Paul has shown that through the Gentiles were formerly, um, through the Gentiles, formerly the Gentiles was, uh, was outside the commonwealth of Israel. We did not, we, did, we were without God and without hope. There was no way, if you look at earlier in that chapter, we were without God as the Gentiles, without, we, without God and no hope. So we didn't have the capacity of the Holy Spirit living in us. So Paul is ending here, he says, Paul has shown that through the Gentiles who were formerly outside God's household, he says, they are now one new man with the Jewish believers. So the new entity is like a temple that is structured on the apostles and the prophets with Christ being the chief cornerstone, amen? It is indwelt by God through the agency of the Holy Spirit. So this body of Christ, this um, 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 corporate believers, it says, we are now dwelt by God through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Any question? Any question? And, yes, please. Uh, and please, if you know you can answer the question, please do not hesitate to give, to also um, add to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, on, Sister Ludi. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I was just uh, looking at, uh, at the title as well. Uh, so going back to the title, the principles of walking. In, in the power of God, is it the same thing as walking with Jesus Christ? Anybody? So what do you mean by walking with Jesus Christ? Yeah, you, yeah the, our title of the Bible study title is the principles of walking in the power of God. Yes. So, uh, if you walk in the power of God, and you also walk with Jesus Christ, are are they the same? Mm -hmm. And uh, if so, if it's the same, how do if it's not the same, how do I walk with Jesus Christ? Um, if anybody asks as well, just in case. Okay, the thing is that when we look at, when you see, for every Christian, for wherever, when, no matter where we are in our Christian walk, we always have to understand that our first example and our first point of contact should be Jesus Christ. How mm -hmm. did Jesus Christ live his life? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ did not just live his life without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's the example we follow. If we follow Jesus Christ in his footstep, guess what? We're following him too. And we see that in when Jesus Christ went, when he was first baptized in water, amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When he was first baptized in water, he, um, after he was baptized in water, the Bible said that the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus Christ and God said, it says he came upon him like a dove. Not that the Holy Spirit is a dove. It just came. It came upon him like a dove. Amen. 
It says, and God said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see also in Acts chapter 10 and verses 38, it mm -hmm. says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing those who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if you want to walk with Jesus, you've got to follow his example. Amen. Okay. So when you walk with the Holy Spirit, we're only following. Jesus Christ came. He came as a man. He came. He came as a man. He showed us how we should relate with God as men. Amen. So when we follow his footsteps, we're followers of Jesus Christ. Okay. Amen. 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 And, and let me tell you something, maybe something you need to, like Bishop always says, says I am a follower of Christ. Okay. Not every Christian is a follower of Christ. Mm. But every follower of Christ is a Christian. Mm. I put it that way. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. So we base, so we have to, you see, no matter where we are in, in God, no matter what we do, no matter where we are, one of the things that we have to know is that our example has to be Jesus Christ. The Bible says the disciples, in fact, the word Christian, I think was mentioned only once in the Bible. Yeah. And the reason why it was mentioned once in the Bible was because they, when they saw the disciples, they said, these people are like Christ. They Christians, that is, they are like Christ, they are like Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. In the way they walk. And they, that was why they came with the word Christians. Amen. Amen. So I don't know whether I'm able to, I've been able to answer your question, Sister Ludi. Amen. Yeah, yes. Um, and from what I learned, or oh, somebody um, has mentioned this before in my previous Bible study, um, to, to walk with Christ is also to if you can just confirm to follow his commandments. Okay. Or obey his commandments. Okay. So, so that's uh, another step to follow. Um, okay. I understand. To, to, to walk with Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay. I understand where you're coming from. But if you look at the scriptures that we've read, about two, three different scriptures. First of all, we said in Philippians chapter two and verses 13, it says, it's God that works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. So what's God's good pleasure? It's God's good pleasure for us to walk in his word. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will never lead us to doing something different from following Christ's commandment. Because the Bible says when he comes, he will come to reveal to us what he heard. Amen. So he's going to be teaching us everything about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything about the commandment of Jesus. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He's there to help us walk in the commandment and in the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it is not separate from following the commandment of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, Pastor Gabriel. It is well. Does anybody have any other opinion or any, anything that you want to add to? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, just to um, add a little bit to the question that uh, our sister just asked. I think she's trying to find out that uh, I think she probably might be a little bit confused about the Walking in the power of the of uh, of in the working the principles of the power of God. That's the team, yeah. yeah. But uh, with the idea of having a relationship to Christ. So is it like is it sort of different from if you are walking in the power of God? Is it different from having a relationship with Christ? But the scripture that came to mind to uh, confirm that the Holy Spirit. If you read John chapter fifteen. Is it John chapter 
15 verse 20 says, I believe, Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes only to testify about Christ. So if you are if you are walking in the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit within mm -hmm. us, the Holy Spirit can testify of nothing apart from testifying of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you have the Holy Spirit and you don't know Christ, then there's, there will be a question mark because the Holy Spirit only testifies about Christ. Mm -hmm. the, when you have the Holy Spirit, you get to know Christ more. You know, so your, your relationship with Christ even builds up, even becomes more stronger because of the Holy Spirit that you have. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit testifies. That's why if someone comes and preach and testify about themselves and they tell you that they have the Holy Spirit, there's a question mark. Because the Holy Spirit only testifies about Jesus and brings glory to God. That's why if you are walking in the principles of the power of God, that you're walking, your walk that you have should testify about Christ and should bring glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So it strengthens your relationship with Jesus Christ Amen. when you have the Holy Spirit. So it's something that I just want to um, add up onto it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Amen. I think he just hit the nail on the head. Boom. Amen. Any other, um, any other, um, do you want to add anything to it? Anybody else? Amen. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Say. Can I just add something? Hello, everyone. Yes. Can you all hear me? Okay. Um, I'm thinking to in regards to Ludi's um, question. If we say we are followers of Christ, Christ is the word that became flesh and dwelt in us. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he was sent to be a comforter, a teacher, a reminder. So the only way we can know we are following Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit is when we have more of the word in us and we are faced in a situation and we confess the word, the Holy Spirit, as you said, will quicken our mortal bodies. He'll bring into remembrance what the word says, which is Jesus. Then I think for me, that's how I know that I'm walking in the word that is Jesus and I'm being empowered by the Holy Spirit to Amen. act according to the word that is in me because it says with the same measure that I give to myself, the same measure I'll be able to ask and then I will receive. Amen. So that's, that, that's just my take about the whole thing. Yeah. Amen. The, thing, the good thing about the word of God is that, you see, we cannot overemphasize the, um, overemphasize the fact that um, um, we cannot overemphasize and the work of the Holy Spirit in us. You see, everything we've talked about here, if we actually look at it, it all is all coming down to the same conclusion. Amen. Hallelujah. It's still the same conclusion. You know, and it's just the way you see, the way the Holy Spirit works in us is multifaceted. Amen. You know, the way he can bring something to your understanding is different from here, how he brings something to my understanding. But at the end of the day, it all comes to the same conclusion. Amen. It's about Jesus Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit comes. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. He's there to help us. You know, the Bible it says, I will send you um, another comforter. And I will send him in my name. That's what Jesus Christ says. Amen. So the word another there, I said, there are two Greek words for another in the, in the Greek word. There is one heteros and there is one alos. Heteros means, for example, if Jesus Christ has used heteros, he would have said, he would have meant like this. I will send you another comforter of a different kind. But that was not what he meant. He says, I will send you another comforter. That means the one of the same kind, another of the same kind, just like me, Jesus. So he's not going to do anything other than Christ. He's not going to do anything. He's not going to show us. He's not going to reveal anything to us other than what Jesus Christ has done in us. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus Christ says, look, there's many things I really want to explain to you disciples, but I can't tell you now. He says, but wait until the Holy Spirit comes. He will reveal all this truth to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So 
Amen. It all comes to that conclusion is to give glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, if we look at, um, I think, there's one more scripture. I think. Hallelujah. Look at them. Um, Second Corinthians chapter three and verses 18. Are we all there? And this is what he says. He says, but we all with open, with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Amen. So here he's saying that we with unveiled face, we're beholding in a mirror, what? The glory of the Lord. Amen. So not that word, that that's what we're looking at in the word of God. The glory of the Lord. Amen. Then he says here, and are being transformed into the same image. So we're being transformed into the same image of that glory of the Lord. Amen. Then he says, we're being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. So now we see that it is the Holy Spirit that is involved in transforming us into that image, amen, from glory to glory, even by the spirit of the Lord. So I said, let's notice, not the word, the glory of the Lord. So let's go to the next chapter and look at verses six of what that chapter says, I mean, that verse says, amen. So not, not the word glory of the Lord, amen. In verses six of chapter four, it says, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we see that the knowledge of the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. And that is what the Holy Spirit is doing in us is to bring us to conform to the image of Jesus. Hallelujah. He can't be any other way. The Holy Spirit cannot lead us out of walking with Jesus and make us conform to the image of Jesus. No, that's his work. That's one of his assignments is to help us to be conformed to that image of Jesus Christ. Amen. He says that in the Bible says, as we look with unveiled faces, looking in the God, into God's word, the Bible says we are metamorphosed. We are changed into that same image. It's the same metamorphosis for a butterfly, you know, from the cocoon to, I don't know what the next one is, but eventually it becomes a butterfly. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you look at the cocoon itself at first, you don't see that butterfly in the, in, in the first place. Then after a while, it eventually transforms into a butterfly with beautiful wings. And it's so beautiful when it flies around. It's like, wow, look at that. That's beautiful. But it started from somewhere. The Bible says, now, as we look into the word of God, as we, as we, as we, as we meditate on God's word, the work of the Holy Spirit is now bringing that life of Christ to be unveiled in us. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Any other question? Exactly. And Romans chapter 12 and verses 12, amen. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Brother Kelly, amen. The same word transformed, metamorphose, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the more we renew our mind with the word of God, Jesus is the word. So as you're looking at the word, you're looking at Jesus, and guess what? The more you look at him, the more you're transformed into his image. And this is done by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Any question? Oh, everyone's really quiet today. Wow. Very, very quiet today. Anything you want to add to what I said? Today, anything you want to add before we move on? I just, oh. I have another question. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry. Bishop, I think uh, you have to take over from here, Bishop. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor Gabriel, I'm not getting involved. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
Go on, Sister Lily. Uh, okay. Um, if, if someone would ask, um, be, be it a believer or non-believer, or someone just uh, starting to know our Lord Jesus Christ, and they ask, uh, how do I start walking with Christ? So what shall I say? So what? What? Uh, how would you explain? Or is there any I'll steps? Let somebody, I'll let somebody else answer that question. Anybody who who can answer it, Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, it starts. It starts by believing. Okay. Bible says, even if if I should quote one of the basic uh, scriptures, Bible says. In John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the, the starting point is believe. The Bible said, and in Romans, I believe it's in Romans chapter 10, it says, with our heart we believe unto salvation, with our mouth we confess. So you believe and you confess, you declare what you have believed in your heart. That's the starting point. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. And um, I think you mentioned that. Um, what about somebody that somebody that is believed uh, that is believed as well, isn't it? That how does he carry on with the, his work with the Lord? Amen. Anybody can can anybody answer that too, please? If you can, so from anybody. Now they've come to Jesus Christ. What should they do next in their work with the Lord? Anybody? I'll say. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, I reckon um, when somebody becomes first saved, that the people who have got them saved through getting them to know the Lord, they need to come around them because they'll be a baby Christian then. And they need to surround themselves with mature Christians who can be there to grow with them and help them and support them along. Because at first you'll have your honeymoon phase and then obviously things don't last honeymoon phase forever. And you've got to teach them all weapons of warfare and also the scriptures to battle against things in your life. So go to Bible studies, prayer meetings, and church attendances. But form a group around you you can connect with that are God, Christ, like mindedness. So you can tell them that, um, that they are welcome to join a Bible study. Yes, and I think the person that's got them saved or being the vessel to get them saved is the one that should actually put their arm around them and carry them through every phase, you know, to that, you know, you played a part in getting them saved. So now you do your bit and invite them over, go have coffee with them, be a friend. You know, um, it's just being you, Christ like Christ is in you. So how you portray yourself to them is they just going to grow even more and more. Amen. 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 Praise, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. If you see one of the things that Jesus Christ actually commanded the disciples to do, because obviously Jesus Christ was, he was handing, he was transferring um, the great commission to them while he was going. Amen. Um, and, you know, before he ascended and he said to them, he says, go into, he says, um, go therefore and make disciples. Amen. That's what he said to them. So basically, when somebody has just come to Christ, they're just a first new convert. Amen. So God is now saying that, I mean, Jesus Christ is saying that these, these people that have come to Jesus, amen, he says, make them disciples. Hallelujah. Make them disciples. In, in, in other words, he's saying, saying that you should get them to be disciplined in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. So for somebody that has just come to Jesus Christ, the first thing to do is to, like um, Sister Lisa said, get them to join a Bible believers church, surround them with people or matured believers that would help them grow in the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, make sure that they, jo they join in a, a Bible-believing church where they can be taught the word of God. Hallelujah. And this is why it's so important, even for every one of us here, this is, this is a very, very important question Sister Ludi has asked, because there are people that have just come to Jesus Christ, and straight away we expect them to know everything that you've learned for the past 20 years. 
And it's not going to be possible for them to know it straight away because they just come to Jesus. So Jesus Christ is saying, he says, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he says, teaching them. So they need teaching. They need where to be taught the word of God. He says, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. Of course, on their own, they can never be taught what Jesus Christ, they can't be on their own. They can't learn all those things. Well, some people might if they put all their heart to it, like getting the scripture and reading the scripture. But, you know, God has so done his body in the sense that he describes the body like a whole body structure. Have you, there's no way your, your arm will say, look, I'm going to do my own stuff. I'm not going to do it with the other part of my body. You know, we're all here to work together as a team. So you have to bring them among believers that can help them and that they can sit under the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ so that they can also grow. Amen. Pastor Gabriel, sorry. Yeah. Uh, one, only, only, only last, last one. One minute. One second. Um, so, so, so if they are new, if these people are new, and they haven't started working with Christ yet. Is it right for us to encourage them and tell them to repent first? What do you mean by if they're not working with Christ? Uh, this because one the, I'm don't... talking about the, the, these new new believers yes. before before joining Bible study or attending the uh, attending the church. It, and uh, we are in discussion for it for example uh, is it all right for us or for, from us to to ask them and tell them that they have to repent first um i think somebody that has just come to christ has started working with the lord yeah so that's one thing you have to know that once they have come to jesus they've started their work with the lord amen however they just need to be taught the word of God. So they've repented because they've turned their heart to Jesus anyway. Amen. They've turned their heart to Jesus. They were thinking of the way of the world of saving themselves. They come to Jesus Christ. Now they have to, now you now have to help them or um, 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 help them. You can, you, can, you can introduce them to your group. You can introduce them to the church that you attend to, you know, is something that you can, you'd ask them if they would love to, because, you know, you know, and you're doing this out of love. It's just to help them to show, to help them grow in the faith too. Anyway, that's why you're doing it. And this is what the Bible, we're supposed to help one another. We that are more spiritual, we're supposed to help one another. And this is how we should do. We should just, just, um, um, advise them and um, ask them to just, if you, if you can, uh, in, and bring them to your church, to your local assembly, where they can grow in the faith, um, in, encourage them to join the prayer meetings, encourage them to join the Bible studies. And um, yeah, they would grow if they sit under the word of God, because the word of God never goes void. It accomplishes that which is sent for and prosper in the things where it is sent to. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Even if somebody's unsafe, uh, uh, anybody's unsafe or want to come to the Bible study, they are free to come because you never know the Holy Spirit might be ministering to them already and to find out. And then you never know that can be a door opening when they discover in a Bible study like such as this. And, and they are hungry and thirsty in Romans chapter 15, verse one. If you read that, you say, now we were strong in conviction and faith or to patiently put up with the weakness of those who are not strong, not just to please ourselves. You see, so the scripture makes it very clear um, that we can bring them in and you will be amazed what the Holy Spirit can do, even through a Bible study that they will even the Holy Spirit can minister unto them. Sorry, Bishop, what, what uh, scripture is that again that you just said? Romans chapter 15, verse 1. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to put it on that. Uh, the, well, the James will put it on. So yeah, even uh, if somebody's not saved and want to come to the Bible, they let them come. They are probably hungry and thirsty already. So it is not necessary that we ask them to repent first, to repent first and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Um, praise the Lord. Can I answer that one please um i think she's trying to come in with 
uh, maybe sharing the gospel to someone and telling them yeah. to repent. Uh, the word repentance is turning unto God. If the person has already is already in the Lord, there wouldn't be the need to repent anymore. But if the person is no is not yet a believer or he he's not seeking after God, then you we can ask the person to repent. That means that person should turn to God. Amen. You Amen. know, have a turn towards God. He should seek God. So if the person has not yet believed on the Lord, is the person is an unbeliever. He doesn't know anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we tell the person to repent. That means the person should turn to God, just as we have all turned to God. But if the person has already had a heart to follow God, then the person has already repented and he is seeking after God. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Amen. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Because Amen. obviously, if, if you are talking to a believer, some of them are not easy to evangelize and uh, some of them can be really difficult. So, so I was just thinking that we also um, have to guard ourselves if there are any questions like that. And, um, and this is why I am confirming all these questions with, with, uh, within the Bible study. <laughs> Thank you so I much. Think, Praise the Lord. Sir. I, also think, I also think that, you know, for somebody that is born again already, you don't need to evangelize to them anyway because they are in Christ. No, I was just talking about the unbelievers. Yeah, <laughs> we need because I'm thinking of, you know, encouraging people to attend. Okay. our church <laughs> more or less amen praise the lord jesus amen. Christ. Amen. finally i'm just going to look at the last um, point amen and the last point is that the holy spirit being a spirit amen uh, being the spirit of god we cannot see him with the optical eyes but we can experience his manifestation he is as real as the person sitting next to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is as real as the person next to you. So you can speak to him, even though you might not be able to see him with the optical eyes, but you can talk to him because he is a person. Hallelujah. Though you might not be able to see him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, he is as real as the one sitting next to you. I talk to the Holy Spirit um, most of the time when I'm on my own. I just tell the Holy Spirit, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know whether you've noticed sometimes when you're in the presence of God, you just kind of like feel like, oh, wow, I'm such a sinful person. I just, I, I just don't, um, I don't, don't feel like I'm holy enough is because of the presence of God, because the presence of God unveils, he unveils what you are not without him. So that makes you want to be like, Abba Father, you are the one that is holy. <laughs> Amen? That's worship. So sometimes when you feel like that, don't it's just faith, 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 faith. all you just need to say, Lord, you know what? I just seen what I could be without you. And you made me, you, you, you redeemed me through the blood of Jesus. And you are the one that is holy. Therefore, because of that, you've made me holy. Hallelujah. Amen. So sometimes you can sense the presence of the Lord very strong like that. I remember there was a time I was, I sensed the presence of God so much around me. And I just, I just laid down on the floor and I was crying. And I just began to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I you know, I did this. I did that. I'm sorry, Lord, because of the strong, of the strongness of his presence. And the Bible says he is holy. That's why there is nothing on this world, in this earth that you can use to, to describe the holiness of God. I know some people tell you you should walk in holiness, but you cannot, you cannot, ex, you cannot describe the holiness of God through a mortal man, because it is only God that is holy. And when you acknowledge before him and lay down before him, because he's the one that is holy, he's the one that can make you holy. 
Hallelujah. So you lay down before you say, Lord, you are the one that makes me. You just find out that, you see, you don't have to strive to walk in holiness because God has made you holy. Because you're worshiping him, you're acknowledging him that he's holy and he's the one that will make you holy and it becomes, it becomes real to you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's why we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is important in our, in our lives every day, every moment. Hallelujah. God is good. I thank God I have the Holy Spirit. I thank God that he keeps me holy. I thank you that he's the one that is holy and he makes me holy. I couldn't do it in my strength. I could not do it in my own ability. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Brother Kelly puts it, says, be holy because... I am holy. Exactly. You see, when you acknowledge that, he says, be holy because I am holy. So say, you are holy, Lord. Then he makes me holy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, many of our work with God that we struggle and we strive sometimes in working with the Lord. And we try to please the Lord God in so many things. And we're running in the flesh and we're going right and running here, health already, scatter. You know, we just have to just bask in his presence. Because when you bask in his presence, his presence rubs off on you. Did you know that? There is nothing corrupt in your spirit. There is no sin, no corruption in your spirit. And guess what? When there, when that is, because you carry the characteristics of God, He makes you holy. He's the one that makes you holy. I see from this point of view. I don't see from my outward man. I see from my inward man. When I see from my inward man, it becomes a manifestation in the natural realm. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop here. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here. Amen. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I just want us to just bow down our head and just give him all the glory because he is holy. I just want us to just worship him. Father, you are, you are great. You are the one that is holy. You are the one who makes us holy. For you said we have been created in righteousness and true holiness. We thank you, Father God. We give you all the glory, Lord. We thank you that we cannot do these things without your spirit. We cannot do anything. We are useless without your spirit. We are nothing without your spirit. But thank you, Father God. We acknowledge this truth today that it is by your spirit. Your spirit causes us to will and to do of your good pleasure. And Father God, we pray that you will make our Christian walk a reality in the name of Jesus. That you will cause us to walk in the reality in that which you've called us to be, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. We will not live a religious life, but a life that is totally dedicated to you, to live for you. For in you we live, we move and we have our beings. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And I hand over to our bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We thank God for tonight. I trust that you were blessed as I have been blessed. Yes, we want to say if there's anybody who want to come to a Bible study, even if they are saved or not, say so make it known to them. We are, we are here to be a blessing and we want to reach out in such a way. So we give God and praise honor for Pastor Gabriel who taught us. Were you blessed tonight? Were you blessed tonight? Put a thumbs up and appreciate the man of God for the anointing upon his life. And just give God the praise and the honor for a time such as this. Let us continue to pray for the men and women of God that is ministering to you and encouraging you and even giving you the right direction. Yes, we're all learning from one another. And we thank God for his presence of the Holy Ghost that rests upon us. If it had not been the Holy Spirit, we would not have been here thus far. And we are allowing the Holy Spirit to have preeminence and even work in our lives daily. So yes, we are blessed and highly favored. As you are aware, this will be on YouTube. You can have a look again and you can even share with your friends and, and tell them, have a look if you're not sure. And we thank God that we allow, we allow questions and it makes it good for each and everyone. For our visitors, thank you for always joining us. We are tremendously blessed that you have had time out of a schedule to be part and parcel of the kingdom of God. So once again, we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Have a good next rest, and we see each other on Wednesday night. And don't forget, we are fasting and praying till Friday. God bless you.